This milling cutter chuck is of the type which uses cutters having threaded shanks, the benefit of which is that only a light closing force is required to secure the cutter. I do also have in the system adapters enabling plain shank cutters to be used, those to the right on the slide. A little more torque needs applying to these to secure them as they are not self-tightening, but still not excessive. In both cases, the cutter is held in such a way that it cannot be drawn out under the influence of the cutter's helix, something that normal collets cannot guarantee, which in any case need considerably more torque applied to secure the cutter. The following shows the sequence I use for securing a threaded chain cutter. The cutter is screwed into the collet so that the end of the cutter is almost level with the end of it. Then, placed into the chuck's body, ensuring the channel in the collet locates onto the key in the chuck's bore. The closing ring is then fitted and tightened very slightly. Even lightly tightened, the cutter cannot be turned. Therefore, the closing ring is turned back just a few degrees to enable the cutter to be rotated so that its end contacts the base of the chuck. This ensures that if the cutter does rotate in a collet, the collet will be pulled forward tightening its grip. The cutter will though remain in the same place axially. It is then lightly tightened using a C-spanner. It may come as a surprise that normally when using cutters with threaded shanks, I just hand tighten the chuck. Only when taking light loads, which would not rotate the cutter in the chuck, do I use the C-spanner. Now to the adapters for the plain shank cutters. I have two forms of these, looking first at the ones where the bore goes fully through. There are two screws which close onto the flap of the cutter shank. First, the one furthest from the cutting edge is very lightly closed onto the flat. Then the cutter pull forward so that the end of the flat rests against the screw and the second screw fully tightened then the first screw likewise this ensures that the cutter's helix cannot move it forward in the holder
The other adapter is very similar, but the hole to take the cutter is blind and has a scrub screw in the end of it. This is used to push the cutter forward so that the end of the flat is firmly against the single screw on the side. This now being tightened. Again, the cutter cannot be pulled forward due to its helix. Now that we are machining with a cutter having just two cutting edges, the feed rate has to be reduced. This to keep the feed rate per cutting edge about the same. 